died this last week in this birth. David Let, Wells' mother. Gladys Wells died this week, David Wells' mother. So let's remember the Wells family in our prayers. I saw Brenda Epley this week, and she seemed to be doing well. They're still going to do some tests to find out what's caused her problems, but she seems very good. Thank, you. Thank you for that update. Do please keep mom in prayer. She's going to have to have her court replaced this week. But this will be the third one she's had. Please keep her in prayer. I guess I will ask for prayers too, Cal, for my mom. She went back to the doctor this week. I said, we'll be out of her voice. I don't know. Most of you probably may not know. She fell back in July and broke her wrist um, and busted her head wide open in the back. So they would come back from the beach while she was on the way back from the car. So she had to hit her head on the back of the car in the garage. And anyway, so she broke her wrist. So she just started driving this week. And she goes back to the fifth morning's office this week and be free of everything. So that's on Thursday. So please give her your prayers. Uh, she's had a tough time not being to drive. <laughs> but, uh, Certainly keep part of these mother in our prayers. Any other announcements? <coughs> I think you probably remember the, the email that I sent out like, about the, the crack in the food for the normal kind of ministry. So we'll be um, plugging that straight to deliver the, the food to the ministry. So please yeah. bring, bring, bring the additional food to the next Sunday. Yeah, this is for the next week. Yeah. All right. Let's begin our worship service. Please join me in open prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love in our lives. Because of your loving kindness and unending grace, we are here to worship you today. And because of your cross that your Son Jesus carried and died, we are able to know who you are and what you have done for us. So we are so grateful for you, for your redeeming grace. Holy God, now we begin our worship for you. We pray that your Spirit guides us and you accept our praise and prayer. May your name only be glorified and your presence occupy us throughout this time of worship. We pray together in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, friends in Christ, let us stand to ourselves, stand in the presence of God's amazing love, and bring our songs of praise and prayers of thanksgiving our act of worship to our Creator. One God. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them to the vineyard. He went out about nine o'clock. He saw others standing out in the marketplace. He said unto them, You also go to the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, about three, he did the same. About five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here out all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired by five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. Then when the first received their daily wage, when, when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, and they bore the burden of the day, scorching heat. He replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me with the usual daily wage? That ta Take that what belongs to you and go. I choose to give you this last, the same as I gave you. Am I not allowed to do so? I choose to do what belongs to me. Are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Today, I would like to thank you for coming up to children's time. I really appreciate that. To thank you, I'm going to give you two pieces of candy. Look for I come up here, what? <coughs> yeah? Yeah? Is that your hand or that was your hand? There you go. 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 There you Thank you for joining us. I'm going to give you four pieces of candy for joining us. Okay. Do you agree that was a pretty nice thing to do? <laughs> Seriously, she got twice as much as y'all. You think that's fair? <laughs> Is that fair? No. Yeah, y'all got two and she got four. Is that fair? No. Do you, do you think I'm less nice now that I was earlier? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're following the script and didn't even know it. <laughs> but why? The nice thing I did for you didn't change. You gave them more. Okay, so what if I tell the adults to get the stickers back to me? I mean, the candy back to me. So y'all get to keep the two pieces. Would you think that was nice of me? No. Yeah. Should I give her back the candy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. In today's scripture story, Jesus told the story about a landowner who hires workers and tells them, he hires them, I will pay you the regular wage. Then at the end of the day, the owner does exactly what he said. I said, I will give y'all two, I gave you two. Then he pays the workers what is right. He pays them fairly. So you might think the workers would be happy getting paid fairly, right? They were not happy. In fact, they were upset. Y'all were upset when I gave Nancy four, weren't you? A little bit. The reason they were upset is because some of the others workers started working later in the day, but they got paid the same amount as the first workers did. In other words, the second workers received the same amount of money doing less work. They were paid even more fairly, more fairly than the first set of workers. 
first set of work was thought this was unfair. Share the good news. To review, if the first set of workers only paid attention to what the landowners <coughs> did, they would have been very pleased with what happened. But instead, the first set of workers paid attention to what the landowner gave the second set of workers. Whoops. Just like you paid attention how you got two pieces of candy and I gave Nancy four. I got three. You got three. <laughs> Nancy shared with you, didn't she? Okay. Closing prayer. Y'all repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who teaches us? Who teaches us? How to notice what you offer us? How to notice what you offer us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. We love you too. We love you too. Thank you and amen. Thank you and amen. Okay. Who wants to go upstairs with me? Me. Okay. <laughs> Let me get back up there. Yeah, I got the band. Everybody can come if they want to. But I'm not saying we'll we all get more candy. Okay. Come on, let's go upstairs. Okay. Y'all want candy? <laughs> All right, let's go. I think we've got some fun things to do up here. Yes, you may get your candy. Do we? So that's what candy can do. Get an adult look at it. My friends, my best to the prayer for today. Oh, you got it. Your word is the light of our hearts and the source of blessing for our eternal spirit of our hearts. In the name of our hearts and minds, as you hear your word of our hearts to death, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The first scripture reading, and the scripture reading for this morning is from the Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, an apostle, said, not from man, not by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brothers and sisters with me, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. It is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach the gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accept, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach it is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, whether I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. O oh, gracious and loving God, we give thanks to you for your amazing grace to save us from sins. We invite your Holy Spirit to fill us so we may be ready to hear your voice at this very moment. God, let your word break open our hearts this day through your spirit, that we may humble ourselves before you and meet our Lord as he is, not, not what we expect him to be. Make the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you and pleasing in your sight. For the honor of peace and joy. 
Today we begin um, a new sermon series on Paul's letter to the Galatians. I've chosen to preach from Galatians over the next several weeks because any of the New Testament letters, Galatians is full of the grace of Jesus Christ and, and, the, and that this is the essence of the good news of God. God's grace is an un- undergirding truth of our Christian identity. And no matter where your own faith tradition comes from, it is a core message of all Christians. Without grace, our Christian identity is empty. So in the next several weeks, I want us to walk through the episodes, epistle of Christ Colossians and try to learn about why Paul tried to emphasize the gospel of Christ in his writings, especially to the Colossian believers, and what it really meant for them. Let's begin from a little bit of historical piece of Colossians. Most scholars agree that this letter was written by the Apostle Paul around AD 50. At the time, there were a couple of social and racial divisions within the Church of Galatia. The first group was the Jewish believers, who experienced and heard about Jesus and followed the gospel. They still live under the legacy of Judaism still keeping their Jewish language and maintaining their own cultures and traditions and, and religious heritage as well, although they were living in a foreign country. For instance, they believe if you want to become a genuine Christian, you need to be circumcised as your evidence or proof of God's childbirth, and that you also follow their own eating cultures, like you, can, you cannot eat pork. Although, or, although you, you can drink wine, but it, 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 it had to be produced by the law, according to the law. And the second group was Greek Christians, who were racially non-Jewish. This group believed in Jesus as their Messiah, but they didn't follow Jewish traditions. They were Greek-speaking, and, and they had been a part of Greek cultures and traditions. And religiously speaking, these two groups were converted Christians by the, the, the gospel missions of the first generation, first apostles, like Jesus' disciples and, and only, probably only Paul. However, sometime later, the, the son of false teachers merged, <laughs> emphasizing the belief of Jewish Christians. They claimed that in order to be saved, the, the Greek culture and Gentile Christians had to believe in Christ plus to follow the laws of Mount Moses. Particularly, they emphasized and, and required circumcision. In other words, they were insisting on Christ plus something else as a requirement of the full acceptance by God. In verse 6, Paul calls this a different gospel. According to Paul, the gospel is all about Christ Jesus. In verse 4, Paul tells us that the gospel is in a, in a nutshell. Jesus gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God, our Father. Here, I want you to draw your attention to the word rescue. This word implies human conditions before accepting the gospel. It means that we used to be in a state of being lost and are helpless and possibly we continue to be exposed to the present evil age, evil world as well. So God has plan to rescue us through his only son Jesus. Jesus Christ is God's plan, God's way, and God's wisdom for our salvation. This is how we can say the gospel of Jesus Christ is God's grace to everyone. Once we are lost, but now found by Christ and God. Once we are helpless and hopeless, but now we have unconditional and unmerited favor of God by believing and accepting the cross of Christ. This is the essence of the gospel, and this is why we call the gospel grace. God's grace is another expression of Christ's teachings. And yet, some Christians 
misunderstand that the gospel is something for non-believers. They often assume that because they, they are converting away, they don't need to hear the gospel anymore. And then they desire more than this or other than this. However, we have to remember this. Paul was writing this letter not to the unchurched, but to the professing, <coughs> professing Christians of large church. Pastor Tim Keller often enjoyed a widely comments, the gospel is not just the ABC of Christianity, but the A to Z of the Christian life. Let us suppose that you are really thirsty now. So you really want to drink some water, but someone, somebody has added a drop of poison into your water bottle, that it is drinkable. What would you say? It is close to, close to pure water. No, it's contaminated. It is undrinkable. <laughs> it is useless. It is the same way with the gospel. We can be creative in ways we spread out the gospel message, but we cannot change its content because the gospel is not invented by human beings, <laughs> but it is revealed by Jesus Christ, death and resurrection. Those false teachers were insisting that the Galatian Christians, Christians should believe in Christ plus do certain things in order to be saved. We sometimes hear new gospel messages. Then how do we identify if it's authentic or not? It is genuine or not? It is true or not? It is said we always need to open to new ways of delivering the gospel or grace. However, sometimes we hear a different gospel or different gospels. For instance, like religious pluralism and universalism, they teach that there are more or many ways to the kingdom of God, and they attract people to live a different gospel. They don't say God's grace because they don't believe in God's grace. They trust human conscience. They don't say that Christ Jesus is the ultimate way we can experience justice and love. They just say it out, and they believe. They can have that by themselves. You may regard they sound open-minded and inclusive. However, they exclude God's grace. They teach that good works are enough to know God. But friends, what makes us Christians is the gospel of God's redeeming grace through Jesus. There is no other gospel, no other good news of salvation. Rescuing human beings and this world from sin. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the most important truth in our faith. Just to be honest with you, oftentimes the gospel of the cross is radically offensive to the human heart because it tells that we are too weak and sinful to do anything for our salvation. The gospel is always offensive to false teachers and liberal mind Christians because it states that Jesus Christ is the only way to expense. However, the gospel is offensive to conservative, good-minded people as well because it tells us that good people also experience troubles and suffering as much as bad people do. The nature of its offensiveness it's because the cause of Jesus Christ stands against all schemes of salvation. This world is offended by the cross. This world is offended by grace. And this world is offended by God's redeeming history. This is why the people who love the cross were persecuted. And even now. During the early church time, the Paul was criticized and denounced by both groups we mentioned earlier. By the Jewish Christians, he was denounced 
with his gospel preaching that excludes the need of circumcision and obeying Moses' law. However, Paul claimed that the true gospel and gospel had broken the chain from the law. From Paul's point of view, they still did understand that the gospel really meant them. Also, Paul was suspected of his apostolate, which is his authority as a leader of the early believers. It was because he never met and learned from Jesus in person. And also, he was known as an infamous persecutor against Jesus' followers. He chased and scattered them out to stop their faith and, and even killed them. In Acts 8, verse 3, it says, Paul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. However, God redirected his journey to the Lord and allowed him to hear the gospel of Jesus on the way to Damascus. There, Paul himself experienced the goodness of Jesus Christ and was called to the kingdom missions. Then the gospel transformed his life and gave him freedom. In other words, the gospel had pardoned his sins and broke, broken the chains that tied him up to the old life. God's favor is free. God's salvation is free. God's love and mercy are free, and God's provision is free, so the gospel is free. There is nothing required to accept this gospel of grace. There is no other gospel. More importantly, not only is the gospel free, but also the gospel sets us free from the power of the Christian people. Our life journey in this world will continue until our Lord comes again to complete God's redeeming history. But friends, it doesn't mean that we need to compromise with the law of this world until then. The gospel frees us from having to pursue what this world pursues and to love what this world loves. The gospel transforms our worldly values, actions, and everything. The gospel is not another law we need to follow. It frees us from having to worry about pleasing one person here and another person there. Paul described this freeing grace in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. It says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. In a way, I, I think our faith is a sort of window. The true gospel of Jesus brings to us as a free gift. And the point of the window is to allow us to see through it and then let light into the world. Christian faith allows us to see our situation and our own weakness in light of God who is powerful, holy, and and through this true gospel of grace, we experience our life transformation. We experience God's rescuing grace. So, sisters and brothers in Christ, I pray that you embrace this one true gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the redeeming grace for us. And not only all all your sins forgiven, but also joy and freedom will come into your life. Because, because for us, there's only one person to please, Jesus Christ. And He will make us free in this world and beyond the coming. Amen. Our centering hymn is 298. When I survey the wonders of us, please stand with your eyes.
grants. God gives us more grace than we can even earn and sustains us in a way we cannot imagine. With the spirit of generosity, let us freely offer ourselves and our gifts to our God through the Word. I don't know. 
house and I picked up a family who lost a beloved one. You go to them and reveal your presence <coughs> and just brothers, grace them with your consoling love and grace. My brothers, as they are struggling and experiencing difficulties with their written body and their spirit, you grace them. So they remember you are the creator, amazing healer. A wonderful counselor, God. God, as we continue our own journey individually and as one body together, we are looking for your resting place and unfailing love at homes, workplaces, and in our relationships. Wherever we are placed, be with us and continue to lead us, protect us, and walk through us. So we may experience your presence every day and the true blessing of your gospel. Now we take a moment to center ourselves and take a step toward our God and seeking for his accompanying peace and loving grace and sadness. Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. To deliver us from captivity, made the covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophet, and so with your people on earth and all the com company of heaven. We pray in your name and join your enemy in heaven. God of all our might, have we been here for your glory and glory? Present us in the eyes. Let us be seen from us in the name of the Lord. Present us in the eyes. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim and release the captives, and recovering the sight to the blind, to set up liberty those who are oppressed. And to announce that the time has come when you will save your people. You heal the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sins. By the baptism of your suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it, to, gave it to his disciples and said, Hey, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of this your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be full the word the body of Christ, within Christ's blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly mass. Through your Son Jesus Christ, we the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory in yours is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in our body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And this cup, which we give thanks, it is sharing the blood. Our friends on board and the same a copy that.